Being a ninja is about having everything in balance, the shadows and the light. A ninja needs to be calm, needs to be poised, ready. Keep your body in peak physical condition. Might be a ninja when I grow up. My name's Joel Goldberg. I've got four kidneys in my body, but none of them work. I have to use an artificial kidney with a dialysis machine, which helps to clear out most of the impurities from your blood. Well, it doesn't get old. I've got a machine at home this time, so I don't have to go to the hospital. It takes two hours and eight minutes, exactly. Do it every day. It gives me the time to just let me mind open and wander and let ideas come in. It lets you explore inside your own soul, go to different places. Gives you this chance to go deeper and deeper. Yeah, I'm from Liverpool, a pretty city, but the best part of it, it's the people. Yeah, I was very, very lucky to be born into the family I was. And my dad never ever discouraged me from doing anything. Got three younger brothers, I'm the oldest, and they're all mad. We used to get up to all kinds. They drive my mum and dad up the wall. My mum used to work as a, an electronics technician, and I had a video camera. We just stay up all night making mad videos, stupid characters. Dad's a musician, always has been since he was 14. And we used to just play music. Everything behind our front door with the family was fun. Everything over the threshold, we're going outside, seeing grey. From an early age, I never took life too seriously. Found out my kidneys were failing when I was 19. Everything up until then was all outward looking. I wanted to go and see the world, be an adventurer. So to jump into volcanoes and swim the length of the Amazon, be like Jacques Cousteau. Just gonna spin the globe wherever my finger landed. That's where I was gonna go. I guess this is where my finger landed. My dad and my brother both donated their kidneys to me. After a while, they stopped working. So this is me now, back on my third stint of dialysis. It's just over four years now. I'm an expert at it. What dialysis will do is take your blood out from your body, put it through a machine, put it through an artificial kidney, which filters out all the unwanted elements that your kidneys would usually do and then put the clean blood black in your body ready for a brand new day being on dialysis this time i thought this isn't going to put me under it's not going to define who i am and i became determined to throw myself into life as best i can i can't travel the world but having a machine at home means I can do so much more on my own doorstep. I've got all this energy and I just need to get it out. Not everyone on dialysis lives forever. My life feels more focused. I get to know what I want to do quicker, what I want to make, who I want to be with, and where I want to go. Throw myself into my music, playing bass in different bands, playing drums, writing my own stuff. Music's just everything to me, really. If I'm not playing it, I'm listening to it. If I'm not listening to it, I'm thinking about it.
got a fish there in my arm and it's an artery and a vein stitched together and then it grows into this big vein which has an increased blood flow so you get a more efficient dialysis. The blood rushes through it to the rhythm of my own heartbeat. I can hear it dead loud. It sounds like this mesmerising pulse. It's like an avalanche, like horses galloping through the waves. Sometimes the rhythm of that dictates the music I'm making. been in situations where I've been in deep, excruciating pain. It's like having a scuba tank on your back, which enables you to go to depths that you didn't know were there. And in order to combat the pain, I take, take myself inside internally to a far corner where there wasn't any pain and just sit in there until it's gone. It would be easy, and I've seen it in other dialysis patients in the hospital. And you see the resignation in some people. Not much hope. I try and counteract that. I try and fight it all the time. And one way of fighting it is, is, to, is to kind of not be in that inner layer of the onions and just kind of push myself out to the outer layers, thinking of something funny to do, a voice, a character, messing about with the ninja kick, something that will push myself out from this little, old, tired, decrepit, sick person curled up inside. Like from the outside looking in, from, a, from a, a, a woman's point of view looking at me, there'd be like so many things wrong with me. This big lumpy arm, this stupid thing that I've got to do every night tied to this machine, we wouldn't be able to do anything. Tired all the time. Sometimes I wish like, like I'd go to bed ugly. Fingers crossed, I'd wake up handsome. Nobody explains to you the guilt you feel. If you have a kidney transplant and it fails, when I had my transplant from my dad, we were both in, in surgery for about nine hours. It's very traumatic. When that kidney failed, I thought I'd done something wrong. And I had to call my dad and tell him and that was one of, one of the hardest phone calls I've ever had to make. I heard it described once as um, death being a sniper at a party that everyone's trying to ignore. If you're faced with it, if you um, you can't ignore it, you find some answers. My second transplanted kidney was on the way out. It just felt terrible. My heart kept pulling, like it's trying, it's hardest to beat, and it stops. And I have to cough to get it going again. And I was getting a bit scared. And I got in bed, I fell asleep, and then I was in this other realm, this other world, but it was like this silver light. Everything was silver, and I could, I could, I could taste and feel and see the ears, like all these 
filaments and particles floating around like silver bits. And then they heard the voice just clear as day just come in. The voice just said, you can go now if you want. And I just shot up. But I was like so thankful that I was, I didn't get pulled. It felt like, well, yeah, I still, still got things to be here for, still want to be here. I was out one night and I saw a fella. He's one of the strangest people I've ever met in my life. And he just looked at me and he went, look for the diamond. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll look for the diamonds. From that point on, I always had this idea in my head, always looking for the diamond. What is it? There's logos written in signs, and then start to think, well, maybe this person who's coming to my life, maybe they're the diamond. This rarity, what a diamond represents, the rarity in, in life. And the condition I, I've been in, like where I've, what I've been through, it makes you look for the better things in life and look for what's good. I'm just surrounded by all these great things and great people. And all the places I've been and the things I've been through and the people I've met has brought me up to this point. And I just think, well, this is it. This is real. This is fun. I'm just going to carry on. <laughs>